when we talk about indigenous people and indigenous nationalities, we tend to talk about them in terms of the others. Sometimes we have this exaggerated reverence, or sometimes we're condescending, or infantilizing, or exoticizing. But whatever the case, we seem to always talk in terms of us and them, as if there's this massive divide separating us from indigenous people and indigenous cultures. And I think that's really too bad. I think that that causes some big problems. Um, I'm not here to lecture you at all, and I understand why we do that. In my experience with indigenous people, I've seen that they have qualities and abilities that are amazing to me. Like, I think about being in an Amazonian community and how the kids there will notice a plane coming minutes before I notice it. Or something even bigger, how they can live without buying food, live only on the food that they grow or hunt or fish. But I think this tendency to see them as so different from us causes problems in that it prevents collaborations. And by preventing those collaborations with indigenous people, I think we're depriving the world of what perhaps is most needed at this time in history. And that's to discover the wisdom and the power that indigenous communities have. I'm here today to tell you about a project called Kara Solar that is an explicit attempt to create collaborations between the indigenous world and the non-indigenous world, and to blur that gap. Kara is an amazing word from the Achua language that means a dream or a vision that's going to come to pass. It's kind of hard to translate into English or, or into Spanish, but maybe the best equivalent would be like a premonition. We decided to, to name this project Cara Solar because we have a dream for a new model of transportation in the Amazon. And it's a dream that's shared by many people. I just happen to be the person that's designated to be here talking to you today, but there's a huge group behind this project, and I speak on behalf of them. I want to bring these people here today because I think one of the most powerful things about this project is that it's a collective dream. And one of the things I learned about that word kara is that it can be shared by many people. That the Achuar feel that dreams don't belong to any one person. And that we all can contribute to the same kara. And I feel that that's what this, what this project is about. But to tell you my, my story with this kara, I have to take you to my first visit to Achuar territory. It was 2007. I was a senior in, in university in the United States. I was studying history, and I was looking for what to do next. And I had the opportunity to visit Achuar territory, and I was totally amazed by what I found there. It's about 700,000 hectares of the most biodiverse forest on the planet. And so I knew I wanted to come back. And two years later, I had the opportunity to go and live in an Achuar community for two years. No, that's a lie, for two months. <laughs> um, and the first day I got there, I think, is the day that this project, Cara Solar, began for me. Um, I arrived, and they called a community meeting and gave me a document that said, the Yutsunsa Community Internet Project. And they said, Oliver, we're working on this project to, to bring internet to Yutsunsa, and we want you to help us. And I, in my head, I screamed to myself, no, this is terrible. And I had this, this really visceral reaction that they shouldn't have internet. They shouldn't bring internet to their territory. But I didn't say anything, and I stayed there, and I started talking to them and, and got to know people and started to learn about how roads are arriving in Achuar territory. If we, if we zoom in on this map of roads, we can see how roads bring deforestation. And I learned about how a lot of the people in the community wanted the road to arrive, and a lot of people didn't want the road to arrive, and there was this internal debate going on. But the fact was is that the roads 
we're arriving. There are two different roads that have now reached Atshua territory from the north and the west. And I learned from the communities about the question of oil, this huge question for the Ecuadorian Amazon, and how the oil blocks were steadily expanding southward, being sold off and approaching uh, to our territory. And again, there were people in the community who wanted the oil to, to come and people who didn't, and there was this internal debate going on. And I went back to that first day when they had given me the document asking me to, to collaborate with them on internet, and I saw the request in a whole new way. And I realized that technology and the outside world is coming to Achuar territory, whether it's in the form of a road, or in the form of the internet, or in the form of oil drilling, it's coming. Technology and indigenous cultures are colliding. And that, to me, uh, was a fascinating encounter and something that I decided I wanted to work on. So I went back to the United States for a year and I studied solar energy and then I came back to Ecuador and went back to Achor communities and started talking to the people there about how can we use technology in the best possible way in your communities. And I would love to say that there was a, an amazing aha moment, but there wasn't. It was a slow development, a series of conversations and this idea of a boat emerged. Transportation is the most difficult um, aspect of, of life in Achua territory. Gasoline is flown in on planes and then used in motorboats. It costs about five times what it costs in the rest of the country. And so there's this dream in Achua territory of being able to travel using the power of the sun. And it's a dream shared by a lot of people. It's a kara shared by a lot of people. And as we began to work on it in earnest, we discovered that the boats that have been used in the Ecuadorian Amazon for thousands of years, these traditional canoes, are the most appropriate hull forms to be used with solar panels and electric motors to create solar-powered boats. We did velocity tests and found that, the, that very small electric motors can move these indigenous-style boats very quickly. They're so efficient and we found that we could fit enough solar panels on the roof to keep the batteries charged and to, to create a, a functioning solar-powered transportation system. We combined disciplines in a way that I think has never been done. We worked with electrical engineers, naval engineers, industrial designers, and with the Achuar themselves to create a design uh, that, that's appropriate for the rivers of, of Achuar territory. And all of this happened in Lago Agrio, in the capital of the oil industry here in Ecuador. And I'm still haunted by something that happened during the construction. We built on the, the shores of the Aguarico River, and there was a guy who lived in the, in the neighborhood where we were building the boat, and he would walk up and down the shore every day yelling at the top of his lungs, bombean muchachos, pump boys, bombean el petróleo crudo, pump the crude oil. He was in some kind of a, a delusion. I think he was a former oil worker who had these kind of uh, daydreams going on, and it formed this incredible, bizarre uh, situation where we were creating this solar-powered boat with that as our, as our soundtrack. We finished the boat in August of last year and put it in the river for the, for the first inaugural trip. And in that moment, this dream, this collective dream of a solar-powered, community-run transportation system was real. And I want to just show you a really brief video. Cara es un, un sueño, visión, objetivos donde que puedes lograr, lograr lo que es la realidad. Un sueño tiene su motivo de informarnos dónde vamos a llegar después de muchos tiempos.
Kar Solar, Canoa Solar. Es un barco que, que va a trabajar a través de la energía solar y no con el combustible. Con el, la idea de, de mejorar una buena conservación de nuestro ambiente. There's so many people that worked on this boat, and it's amazing for me to have Luis and Guido and David and Pascual and those people that you saw in the video here uh, in the room today. So we put the boat in the water, everything worked, and then we had a dilemma. How do we get the boat from Sucumbíos in the north of the Ecuadorian Amazon to Achuar territory in the south of the Ecuadorian Amazon? And we decided to go the river route. We decided to take an 1,800 kilometer trip down through Peru and back up into Ecuador in order to extend this dream to a wider public. So we set off on March 28th of this year. We camped in beaches along the way. Um, we built a, a support boat that was also 100% solar uh, that, was, that went behind our boat uh, just in case there were any emergencies. We never had to, to use it, um, which was great. But uh, it, was, it was an amazing adventure. Um, I think the part about it that I liked the most was waking up every morning and not knowing where we were going to sleep that night and knowing that you can have a real adventure in the year 2017. It was also really difficult. There was, you know, all the technical difficulties. We, we broke propellers on, by hitting rocks. We had really cloudy days where we couldn't advance very far. We had all the interpersonal dynamics that you can imagine with nine men on a very s relatively small boat trying to make decisions together. Um, but it was an amazing group. There were nine people. There were two Achuar, one gringo, a German, uh, two, two Quichua, one from the Amazon and one from the Sierra, um, and three Quiteños. And I think we made a pretty good team and we we made it uh, to, to Achuar territory, stopping along the way and showing the boat along the way and connecting with communities along the way, and also seeing the state of the Amazon today, which was, I think, pretty devastating for all of us. We expected to see this massive, beautiful, intact forest and found instead an absolutely devastated, uh, contaminated, polluted Amazon with very few forests like Achuar territory, like the one that we were bringing the boat to. Here we are the night before the arrival uh, celebrating, and when we made it to Achuar territory, my, my daughter was there waiting for me along with my wife, which I, which I didn't know. I saw them in the binoculars as we, as we approached, and uh, it was one of the more exciting moments of my life to, to see them and to get to share this dream with them. And I'll always remember being in the Achuar community after arriving and seeing my daughter play with the with the Achuar kids, and play completely naturally, no problems. There's no us and them to her. And that was really powerful for me to see that, that there was no, that this divide that I thought existed um, might not exist. So I think that's the central message that I've taken from this project. And, that I want to try to share with you. We've built this kata that's been um, shared across cultures between indigenous people, between universities, between companies, between gringos, between all these different people who have a dream and have made it real. What I, what I take from this dream and what I think is the most powerful thing uh, that I've learned is that One second. <laughs> you, 
you remember in the beginning when I said how kara is an achor word that doesn't have a definition in, in other languages? As I've been preparing for this, for this talk, um, I've been thinking and thinking a lot about that. And I realized that that's actually not true. That when we speak, we, have, we use concepts similar to karas all the time. Like you might say, I had a feeling that might happen. Or, ah, I had an inkling that might happen. I had an intuition that might happen. I think those are the exact same way, those are the exact same idea. So this idea that indigenous people are tapped into this secret source of knowledge, I've actually realized is kind of an illusion and that we all have access to that same knowledge. I think that the difference might be more like we, we have the same hardware, we just have different so software. And we've been trained for years and years and years to think that with our software, we're not capable of tapping into this, this knowledge uh, and this wisdom. And, I, and I've learned that I think, I think we can, I think all of you can. I think that all of us contain multitudes I think all of us are maps to the stars. Thank you.